days. The universe is incredibly big and seems so full of watching. potential for life, with billions of habitable planets. If an advanced civilization had the technology to travel between the stars at just 0.1% of the speed of light, it could colonize our chat, galaxy chat, in roughly chat, 100 million years. This, this is the intro. Look, which let is me just not get that my long, medical. given the billions of years the Milky Way has existed. So, in principle, any spacefaring civilization should be able to spread rapidly over huge sectors of the galaxy. And yet, we see nothing, hear nothing. The universe seems empty, devoid of others. This is the Fermi Paradox, which we've discussed in more detail in other videos. Confronted with the seemingly empty universe, humanity faces a dilemma. We desperately want to know if we are alone in the Milky sad. Way. We want to call out and reveal ourselves to anyone watching, but that could be the last thing we ever do. Because maybe the universe is not empty. Maybe it's full of civilizations, but they are hiding from each other. Maybe the civilizations that attracted attention in the past were wiped away by invisible arrows. This is the dark forest solution to the Fermi Paradox. Wait, what? The way of life. The hunter awakes in his hiding place and carefully listens for suspicious noises from the thick undergrowth before he gets up. Another night has passed without incident. The forest is dark and full of fog. Hello, Mr. He considers calling Hope out to others to end there. his loneliness, but stops himself at the last the moment. Server, what if they are like him? Choice, really it. It. All living things now. seek to survive, secure resources, and multiply. Their greatest obstacle are other living things that share the same objective. Competition between species favored the survival you. of beings with advantageous traits. Our ancestors were inventive, competitive, expansionist, and greedy for resources, which led them to winning the competition for our planet. Today, most other animals are so utterly at our mercy that we wipe out about a dozen species a day, just as an unintentional byproduct of how we like to run things. Wait, but humans are more than individuals. From us, cultures emerge that also compete with each other. Competitive and expansionary cultures spread faster and further and merge with, subdue or destroy others. If we look at our history, it becomes clear we are dangerous. Not just to others, but also to, to ourselves. ourselves. Our human nature has driven us to take over every corner of our planet and soon we will look to the stars, both to expand our domain and ensure access to ever more resources. And, we watch, and then we might stumble upon others trying to do the same thing. It's likely that the competition of life also takes place on far Chat, technically, chat, could there be some elements out there that, that we don't know about? Like some weird fucking like purple radioactive fucking rock stone you put up like in a fucking thing? And it gives it power for like one million years, some shit. Like, wait, Janet. So it's logical to assume that an alien civilization that came to dominate Spot their planet right? would be in some regards similar to us. But if they're similar to us, they too may be dangerous. The implication. As the hunter sneaks through the dark forest all alone, he knows that there might be others like him. He can't know their intentions, if they are aggressive or not. The hunter knows he would kill to ensure his own survival, so he has to assume that they would too. And it might be we that if he stumbles upon another hunter, the one that shoots first survives. None of this means that conflict is unavoidable. So far, the progress of the modern world seems to have made us more peaceful, not more violent. Maybe this is true for other civilizations too, that eventually progress means less Hello, conflict, not more. Different Please alien civilizations it. also should vary from, from the mild and Your peaceful to the malevolent and militaristic. 
The existential problem we're facing is that when we meet others between the stars, we have no way of telling who is peaceful chat, or chat, aggressive chat. and what their true intention is. Isn't one of the problems also chat, of like exploration or whatever the fuck is that yeah, if the universe is expanding space, at rates we'll that, that, that are so fast to sit in your that nose and we won't be able to... Similarly, they it's might not understand or trust months, our intentions even if we tell them that we are peaceful. On top of that, if we did discover another civilization and they discovered us, the light years between us would mean years of communication delay. Both sides would be in a state of uncertainty, wondering if the wisest move is to just attack because there's another serious issue, technological explosions and the first strike advantage. We don't know where the limits of technology are, but we do know how much technological progress matters in war. A few hundred or thousand years can turn conflict with uncertain results into a one-sided massacre. Caesar's legions would stand no chance against Napoleon's army with their cannons and muskets, which would be eradicated by artillery from the First World War, which would not stand a chance against today's drones and guided missiles. So the power Wait, level chat, of different civilizations. Imagine chat, yeah, imagine chat, imagine chat, yes, yes. I said this last time. And then Jay, if you were to respawn, right, one guy or one squad, or you and your squad, you respawn one time, way in the past, in like fucking zero, year zero, and Almost you have like years fucking probably. ARs and RPGs, motherfucker, and you're with- months, dude, six QCL. Dude, wouldn't that have an insane impact, dude? You spawn it, you respawn, it, but you have technological advantage. You have like rockets and fucking, and boom. Dude, he can soul care the whole squad. Organizations may vary massively, and even if not, between the time it takes us to detect another civilization he would and us an entire nation. Hi, we might already be hopelessly behind on the tech tree, which is bad enough. But the nature of interstellar conflict makes this worse. If your opponent is light years away, sending an invasion fleet takes so long that by the time it arrives, it might be hopelessly obsolete. Infinite ammo. So, war between civilizations might be just about eliminating the other to remove an existential threat to yourself. Someone else who might be so scared of you that they attack the first chance they get. In this environment, the only way to guarantee a win is to strike with such force and speed that the target has no chance of survival or time to counterattack or escape to seek revenge later. The stakes are the highest possible with no room for error. If we assume that the majority of civilizations live on planets, that leaves them pretty vulnerable. All you need to do is throw something massive at a planet to make it uninhabitable. So the ultimate interplanetary annihilation weapon is probably something like a relativistic kill vehicle. A missile shot at a planet at a significant fraction of the speed of light. For example, a missile the size of a person going 95% the speed of light has as much energy oh. as all nuclear bombs on Earth. If you shot a few dozen at the civilization you wanted to wipe out, success would be fairly certain. Even a single hit would suffice. Guys, this is not that really odd question, chat. Guys, listen, listen. This might be really, this seem really odd, okay? Big Guys, shield. Odd, chat. If you peer, if you make a hole the size of a, of a of a manhole through a planet, but the planet doesn't have a core that's hot, it doesn't have like a, a crust. It just peer, it peers all the way through. What happens if you go up top and you jump inside the hole? From the very top, what happens then? What, do you go through it, or whenever you hit the middle, you you start going boom, 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 and then you you're just in the middle. You're stuck in the middle, right? You would get stuck in the middle. It's absurd of an idea. A civilization like only slightly above us on the Kardashev scale would have enough energy to that. send multiple but strikes against every planet it suspects of harboring life. What makes Jeff these weapons so sinister is how much they favor a first strike, since they would be so fast that oh, it might be... Oh! The gravity on both sides doesn't, doesn't go to zero, it just crushes you. ...possible to protect yourself effectively against them once they're launched. Conflict between civilizations may not be lengthy affairs, but rapid winner-takes-all situations, where the first one to shoot wins. This makes any civilization an existential threat to any other. And if every civilization is an existential threat to every other, there may be only two kinds of civilizations out there. Quiet ones and dead ones.
So, what should we do? Should we worry? It's unlikely that anybody has noticed humanity yet. The radio signals we've transmitted in the last 100 years traveled a relatively tiny distance and have long decayed into unreadable noise. Yeah, it's nothing. At our technological stage, if we don't actively try to get noticed, and if nobody specifically looks at our pretty unremarkable solar system, we'll stay hidden. But one day we will venture into space in a serious way and need to consider these kinds Let's of questions go. They will just again. Make fun of us. We don't us. know if there are others or if we are going through the forest Surely alone. But we have no way of knowing for sure. For the time being, it seems the best we can do is to carefully listen. And even if we see others step into a clearing and make themselves known, we should not reply right away, but carefully watch them from the undergrowth. Perhaps we are also thinking about this all wrong by allowing our primitive brain that evolved in the context of the gruesome competition of life to conjure fears of predatory aliens all around us. Maybe the fact that we are Perhaps. looking at the universe like this is a sign that we are not grown up yet as a species. There could be a friendly, welcoming community of alien civilizations waiting to hear from us when we are ready. As for now, well, well, the good news... Guys, if, that's, if that's the case, and they were very intelligent and rational, wouldn't they know that our species is just it's irrational and stupid? And they would see that's a trend to just eliminate? Is there is actually little we need to do. If, we just if they are rational and calm the and chill, we send out they would definitely the galaxy, kill us then. We need to watch the sky just, and learn more about our galaxy, our forest. Because whatever the nature of our are forest is, full of... Because, because we're such a threat... To everybody that we are a threat to ourselves that's how that's how bad we are that's that's, that's how we wait wait we're so we're so dog shit that that we can't even prevent ourselves from self-destructing it so of course they says says see us as a threat dangerous right? or friends or nobody at all only careful observation can tell so let's do that at Excuse last me. the Everyone hunter reaches a clearing and finds a comfortable position. Slowly, the sun melts the fog away. Lost in thought, he admires the vegetation until suddenly he is eye to eye with another hunter, frozen in terror, just like himself. His mind is racing, considering all the different options. The hunter takes a deep breath and makes a decision. Maybe the only way out of the dark forest is to step into the clearing together. And with this hopeful picture, we say... Or if this guy is like dumb or stupid, um, you, go, you go for a handshake and instead you tap him, you get his gear, and now... Goodbye to the year 12,021 of the human era. Now you're it was a wild year to say the least, still much more fun than 12,020. Kurzgesagt had its most successful month ever and published a book. We tried a lot of new techniques and really got into Blender and Cinema 4D, hiding more and more 3D in our videos. Oh, video. We have so many ideas for next year, and, and, and big and ambitious plans that we can't wait to share with you. And all of this was and is possible because of your nice, direct this is support. Good brainwashing. Thank you so much. Kurzgesagt only works because of you. Video. I enjoyed it. Ta -da. Okay. Okay. What else? What else? We said the my proper video. At the end of the year, it was good. We've though. designed a few. Okay. Thanks.